we knew we were great, you know, and we had, yeah, that's the way we grew up. And nobody had no money, nobody had no money. But there was Aunt Thelma and Sister Jean and the whole African-American family produced such beautiful music. We used to go to black church on Sunday, and we'd have to go. And Randy Weston was six foot seven, I'd be wearing my little, little short pants and bow tie and get in that church. We got to be there every Sunday. And you can't go to the toilet but so many times. Because they have them big sisters blocking you in. And you're hearing this music that's different than what you hear outside the black church. But the African American church, that's African spirit. That's the African pulse in all of our music. Whether you call jazz or blues or hip hop or that stuff, it's the African pulse that makes all this music so beautiful. So what we attempt to do through Melbourne, listen, to bring us back. What is music? What is music? How do you describe music? It's music is our, is our spiritual language. All people on the planet Earth have music. And everything they do with music tells their story, their life. No matter where it is, there's always music. That's our universal language. But that universal language came out of ancient, ancient Africa. African music is as old as the ancient as Africa itself. Why the creator chose that part of the planet, Africa, spirit, diversity, rhythms, et cetera, et cetera. But those ancient people were in touch with the universe. So they knew that music came from the universe. Each planet got its own sound. Each planet got its own rhythm, the stars. Mother Nature's got all kind of music up in the galaxies. But that's the origin of music. And our early ancestors captured the spirit and the scales of music by being in touch with the creator. So in traditional society, there's music for a baby being born, there's music for a dance, music for a ceremony. Traditional music, my years in Africa, is mind blowing. Because to be a massive musician, you have to tell only, and plus you gotta be a healer, you gotta be a historian with music. So Melba listened, she was so brilliant, so gifted, so we're celebrating her. And the first piece we're gonna do is called Blues to Africa.
Neil Clark on percussion. Senti DiBriano on bass. Bernie Williams on guitar. TK Blue. And the A-Jazz Master, Randy Weston on piano. I've always been curious by nature, because I would like to know how things start, right? So I was trying to imagine what happened when their first Africans saw a piano and what they did with that piano. Now, Professor Marshall Stearns, God bless him, he said, Randy, listen to the oldest styles in music. Listen to Jim Yancey, go all the way back and listen to how they approached the piano. Now, they approached the piano almost like a, like a drum, because coming from Africa, seeing a European instrument, there's that thing that goes in it, that magic, that thing that goes into to the piano or trouble or trauma or whatever. But the whole point is that music is all of our language. We all come from the same place, and we try to honor those who precede us. Now, I'll never forget the great Duke Ellington when he went to Senegal in 1966. And a journalist came to him and said, Duke Ellington, he said, uh, what do you think about African music? Duke Ellington said, I've been playing African music for 35 years. And it's true. He had an incredible collection of African traditional music. He was a painter, he was a sculptor, and he's always trying to capture the spirit of the people on the planet, in particular African people, African American, Caribbean, whatever. But he was that total human being. So going back to say this, that this piece is for those mysterious magic people who have created what we call music. We call this piece The Healers. Thank you. 
I told you Mel was in the room. You don't believe me, huh? Check that out. What kind of stuff was that? This guy thinks she was right. And sometimes we'd get to the studio to do the recording, and she already written the arrangements. In the studio, she would just say, I'm going to change this, do something else. I said, OK, here we go again. But her depth, you know, she pushed that, uh, for me, that female, that woman. Woman represents the earth, you know. And she pushed that other thing into her music. I see that very seriously. So this piece, I was so lucky I got a commission from the city of Chicago to do a composition celebrating the great Machido of Cuba and Dizzy Gillespie. Now, Machido was the first African-Cuban music that came to America. It was Machido. The second was Mr. Dizzy Gillespie when he brought Channel Posel from Cuba with that incredible auction in the late 40s. So we got a commission to do a piece, and I thought about Dizzy, and I thought about Machido, 
how they'd set the foundation of bringing all our music together, you know. So it becomes a beautiful a trip from Cuba to New York to Brazil, Paris, whatever. But they were wonderful. So the piece was called African Sunrise because when I was in Tangier, Morocco, I get up very early in the morning and you see the sun. You see this huge, I never saw a sun so big. Spain is on the other side. But you see this huge sun in the morning, you know, and it's quiet. And I say, wow. So that's part of it. It's dizzy. It's the African sunrise, but it's also the surprise of discovering how much we have to learn about our place of origin, our ancestral home, all of us, you see. How much is there? How much depth? How much foundations they did, especially in music? Okay, African sunrise. Melba, listen, arrangement. 